Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, my name is Lynn. I am an overseas student from Vietnam who had the privilege to live and work in the UK for the last 10 years. I'm now working as a pharmacist and I've just started my experience, my new chapter as a local pharmacist. I work for the NHS as a bank pharmacist three days a week. I'm working for um, a retail pharmacy for two days a week and then doing other hustle in between as well and i'm using this channel to share all the learning and experience that i've got throughout my time of living and working in the uk i tend to talk about pharmacy uh, personal finance and, and personal development and that is a, something that i really love learning and i would like to use this channel to share it with you guys the video today will be my reflection about my experience of obtaining the pharmacy degree i guess it's like the sixty thousand pound questions that is pharmacy worth it so i was on from overseas so i had to pay international student fee and i think my tuition fee was around 15,700 per year and pharmacy degree was long four years I had to pay, pay about 5,000 pound for the placement year as well and that is just tuition fee not including all the accommodation all of the living costs again if you put that into perspective that is a lot in an investment and where we probably want to question is it worth it at the end what the job perspective that you have at the end of the day you would want to make sure that you know after all the effort that you put in five years of your life and a lot of money that you put into it you want to make sure that you can gain something useful from it so hopefully you can listen to my experience and you can make your own decision if you are starting your application if you are deciding whether you would like to pursue pharmacy or medicine or any other healthcare associated jobs i just started thinking about this video because i was speaking to one of the second year pharmacy students that, who actually feeling really burnt out she, she was really stressed out through preparing for all of the exam that she had to do and i remember back into my time i guess i was in the same boat was deciding whether i want to you know carry it halfway as you, as you get halfway to the course and you feel overwhelmed with all of the preparation that you have to go through and then on top of that you have all of the complaints all of the negative comments from other people all things that pharmacy is dying in Korea and I can guarantee to you that it is not if you are choosing the pharmacy degree because you love to be able to help other people you love the science and you love to be able to make an impact then i strongly encourage you to carry on with it so for the pharmacy degree in the uk you will be undertaking four years full time studying and then one year you will be a trainee pharmacist i guess it's to learn about the practicality of being a pharmacist and afterward you'll be taking an exam past the exam you will be registered with the GPAC which is General Pharmaceutical Council and it depends on the university will have different models but based on the job perspective the majority of uh, pharmacists graduate will be, be a community pharmacist some of them will be GP pharmacists some will be hospital pharmacists so there's a lot of sectors that you can get involved into I think the employment rate four years ago when I attending the career fair is around 98% in general everybody will get into the full-time employment after they complete their degree and complete their pre-registration exam and the majority of people will be community pharmacists or hospital pharmacists at the end even at the time when we was doing our placement there wasn't much an option to, to do your placement in GP practice but I think that landscape has been changed at the moment there's a lot of split placement between GP and hospital or GP and community because the increasing demand in GP GP pharmacists there are some changes in the pharmacy course itself and they want to implement the independent prescribing into the pharmacy degree so at the end when you finish your degree you are an independent prescriber so that is also a bonus as well because I know there's a lot of pharmacies who are independent prescriber who can run their own clinic they can run their diabetes clinic they can run their anticoagulant clinic or there's some pharmacists that are running then vaccination center that those are the options that wasn't available 
four years ago when I first started my placement. So if you are bombarded with, with all of the negative comments about pharmacy as a dying career and there's a, uh, people are stressing out about the funding cuts in pharmacy and then you might get anxious that actually you're spending a lot of time at university, you're getting yourself into a lot of debt and you don't have any jobs at the end and I can guarantee you that's not the case. If you are willing to fund yourself or trying out different sectors there's always going to be an option for you at the end as we are going through this unprecedented time with healthcare COVID-19 is still lingering about and there's a, a lot of pressure that putting into the NHS and putting into the healthcare sector is always going to be a demand for pharmacists at the end or if you want to try something different even more abroad like Canada or Australia a few of my universities friends had done so and uh, some have moved to Canada some have moved to Germany there, there's loads of options that are available and I guess the transferable skills that you'll be gaining through your experience it, it will equip you to be able to adapt to whatever environment if you want to have a stability then gaining a stable job as pharmacist is not difficult at all and also uh, the other things that's quite beneficial as a job as a pharmacist is the flexibility in with different hours that you can actually work if you work in hospital you'll be doing your 37 hours per week it might be monday to friday you might be occasionally do some weekend shift you might occasionally taking part in on-call duties if you're working in a community pharmacy then it's again might be spread over 40 hours a week it depends on the pharmacy opening hours some pharmacy are 100 hours pharmacy and then you can actually start late finish late or you want to start early and finish early and you know there's a lot of options i've seen pharmacists start working only a few days a week and then they can actually spend the rest of their time to pursue something else that they are interested in uh, for example myself at the moment actually since covid there's actually option to work remotely to work from home there are a lot of options that we can try to which i think that it's quite valuable to know that these are what you will have if you want to plan your life in like after five years you know after you've done all your initial training and you want to try uh, something else that outside of pharmacy perspective or oh, some people would like to take another degree in training to medicine or dentistry and you know when you are 18 and you make your decision to pursue the career in pharmacy as you as the experience that you expose yourself into might sparkle something that you didn't think that you were was interested in then you might want to pursue something else completely in life and that is okay and pharmacy degree allow you to do that as much as it's allow me to have the option to try it out and i think i think this must be my favorite point about pharmacy but it also give you the the option to try something else it depends on which pharmacist you be speaking to some people are really passionate with their jobs some people are not it depends on what they have gone through but i still love being a pharmacist i'm proud to say that i am a pharmacist and i can contribute you see that when you are working as part of the multidisciplinary team um, it's amazing to see that everyone will pick up on different things in the journey to optimize patients care that is the point when you can use your medicine expert to know is the treatments appropriate for the patients any interaction that you need to be aware of any dose reduction that you need to take into consideration if they, the patient have renal impairment if the patient have hepatic impairment or if they have other comorbidities that make certain intervention become contraindicated to the patient and that is that's the moment for you to shine and the doctor might be focusing on the examination diagnosis still want to go above and beyond and that is when you feel rewarded whether it's big or small you are making an impact into some, someone else's life that's when i feel like actually this is what i wanted the other thing that was considering it for the degree as a pharmacist is that 
career perspective that you can have if you want to work as a pharmacist, especially if you're pursuing the career in clinical pharmacy. There are a lot of specialities that you can both into. The other th good thing about pharmacy is that there's a lot of events for networking that you can take part in. It's organized by RPS, organized by CPPE. I love attending clinical pharmacy congress where you working with like-minded pharmacists, the pharmacists that actually love learning and teaching and sharing their experience with other and that is when you feel like actually there's more to the pharmacy career than just being a community or hospital pharmacy. You can go in to be a research pharmacy or be a lecturer at university. If we go back to the last video that I have that when I decided to quit my full-time pharmacist role, I decided to quit it because I guess I, I went to a really rough time and I was got really fed up with the bullying, toxic environment of full-time pharmacy life. But I still love my job i still love to be able to be a pharmacist and contributing and keep learning again i guess the other valuable skill that you have apart from all of the communication skill problem solving skills researching skill you also the skill to constantly stretching and keep learning because with ever changing time there are always going to be new treatments that are available you want to equip yourself and you want to as you get used to that skill you can also using that to take part in different degree or you if you would like to try out something else completely different you can also do that too by using the learning that you have through the pharmacy degree that's all for me today and i can guarantee to you that if you are choosing the pharmacy degree because you love to be able to help other people you love the science and you love to be able to make an impact then i strongly encourage you to carry on with it yes it will be worth it whether it's £60,000 debt that I've, I've got myself in, into, the learning and the experience that you have at the end of, of it and the, how you can use it to expand yourself further, the pathway that you can have after you complete the degree and I think it will be worth it. That's it, that's all from me and I hope you find it useful. I hope that it will guide you to finish what you do or if you are contemplating whether you want to do a pharmacy degree or something else for my experience of working in different sector and how, how pharmacy have changed me as a person and how and how obtaining the degree had gave me the confidence that actually if i can complete this degree i can do something else too pharmacy provide me the stability and it also provides me the flexibility whenever i need it and that is something that actually really useful in this a and age thank you very much for listening and i look forward to see you in the next video take care and goodbye